Welcome to NTN Nightly, I am Janelle Novel. this edition's top stories. Thousands of St. Lucians recommence employment as St. Lucia reopens its tourism industry. The Royal St. Lucia Police Force highlights successes during the COVID-19 response period. And the Republic of India supports St. Lucia's fight against COVID-19 with a donation. The economic impact of the reopening of St. Lucia's tourism industry continues to grow. To date, St. Lucia has welcomed some 3,254 visitors and 755 returning nationals. Permanent Secretary in the Ministry of Tourism said that a number of properties on the island have reopened and thousands of St. Lucians have recommenced employment. The disclosure was made on Tuesday, 11 August 2020, during a COVID-19 national response update to the nation. St. Lucia, as of the 9th of July 2020, began receiving commercial flights. To accommodate the influx of visitors, a number of properties on island have been COVID-19 certified and reopened, including Sandals Grand St. Lucian, Ladera, Sugar Beach, a Viceroy Resort, Stonefield Villa Resort, Bay Gardens Beach Resort and Spa, Jade Mountain and Chastney, Windjammer Landing Villa Beach Resort, Marigold Bay Resort Spa and Marina, Serenity at Coconut Bay, Ted Woosh Resort, Kai Bluff Villa and Hotel, and Cap Mizor. Permanent Secretary in the Ministry of Tourism, Donalyn VT, indicated that the impact on the economy has been far-reaching. In employment, just under 1,500 individuals have resumed employment at the hotels and individuals remain employed at the quarantine centers. The Permanent Secretary indicated that a total of 500 taxi drivers has been COVID-19 certified and are currently in operation, as well as 56 boat operators. Thursday, Friday this week, the ministry will be distribu distributing the COVID certified decals for the other tourism taxi, those with the H plates, as well as some of them from the top companies and the DMCs. So we'll have the resumption of an additional adding to about 1,500 persons within the tourism transportation sector would be certified and ready to work. Um, in terms of the sites and attractions or the, the dive centers, for example, we have dive operators who would be um, resuming their service as of August 17th, which is Monday, and um, they would be counted in as well. So essentially, as we open up, we know we're doing it by baby steps, but by each step and each measure, and we continue adding services, the em employment will continue to mushroom. The publication campaign also allows for increased employment in the tourism industry. The campaign was launched with the view of allowing individuals from countries within the designated travel bubble to visit St. Lucia without having to undergo the 14-day quarantine period upon the presentation of a negative PCR test conducted within seven days of travel. As of the 7th of August 2020, bubble countries include Antigua and Barbuda, Aruba, Anguilla, Barbados, Bermuda, Bonaire, British Virgin Islands, Curacao, Dominica, Grenada, Guyana, Montserrat, St. Barthelme, St. Kitts and Nevis, St. Vincent and the Grenadines, and Trinidad and Tobago. While Bermuda has not been removed from the bubble, anyone traveling from Bermuda via an international jurisdiction will be treated as an international traveler. The Permanent Secretary noted that it is important that there is equal opportunity for all subsectors of the tourism industry to benefit and the introduction of the publication campaign allows just that. While we have visitors coming from high-risk countries, we're going into COVID-certified properties. We also have bubblecation where visitors from the Caribbean could go to the alternative accommodation providers, which is really what St. Lucians regard as the Airbnbs, if I borrow the brand of the company. Um, we want to ensure that there's some level of equity and distribution. And so we have assigned the visitation from the Caribbean bubble to these accommodation providers where we have allowed the high-risk visitors to go into the COVID-certified properties where the protocols are very rigorous and we would be able to deal with any of the risk that presents itself. Phase one of the reopening of St. Lucia's tourism industry is still being considered a risky phase and as such has been extended to September 30, 2020.
The Ministry of Health and Wellness says in Lucia's COVID-19 testing capacity has been increased. This, according to health officials, is necessary as the island seeks to adjust to the new normal, pushing on with the phased reopening of all sectors, including the tourism sector. The Ministry of Health and Wellness to date has conducted some 4,274 PCR tests. St. Lucia, from the 13th of March to the 10th of August 2020, has recorded 25 confirmed cases of COVID-19. Individuals testing positive for COVID-19 range in age from 18 to 86 years. 16 of the 25 confirmed cases were imported. None of the COVID-19 patients have needed to be placed on a ventilator, and St. Lucia has recorded no COVID-19-related deaths to date. Medical Officer of Health in the Ministry of Health and Wellness, Dr. Glensford Joseph, indicated that St. Lucia has increased its testing capacity drastically. We are able to run an average, which we have seen thus far, 196 cases per day or tests per day. And the system has the capacity presently to increase their testing to 500 to 1,000 tests per day. Uh, they are working to improve the testing capacity by automating the system and putting other measures in place so that uh, St. Lucia can remain on top of our testing capacity. Uh, it is important to know that uh, while we would have had our reopening of the borders July the 9th, definitely with the uh, entry of uh, persons into St. Lucia, we have our testing range uh, from about uh, six, sorry, 60 cases uh, per day to 180. And this, of course, is going to vary depending on the flights and many other factors. The ministry has also changed the testing strategy from not only testing symptomatic individuals, but also testing individuals who are at risk, meaning individuals who may have been exposed to someone who tested positive for COVID-19, as well as persons who are coming into St. Lucia who may not have done a COVID-19 test, or for any other reason where the validation of one's COVID-19 status is required. The Medical Officer of Health indicated that with the commencement of the fifth phase of the country's reopening and the reintroduction of flights to St. Lucia, the risk associated with COVID-19 and its spread has increased. Consequently, the Ministry continues to monitor the situation and institute measures accordingly to ensure the protection of all St. Lucians. At the Uranora International Airport, we would have had uh, established the third way persons are screened and vetted to ensure that uh, the, the risk uh, of uh, persons coming to St. Lucia is being managed effectively. Uh, at that point, uh, we look at the, uh, they have screening questions to go through, they have, uh, we review their test, and also based on uh, the screening process, they're given band or color-coded bands that would allow us to determine whether this person has been qualified for home, quarantine, uh, government-run facility, uh, whether they're going into a hotel uh, that is a pre-approved hotel. A proposal has been placed before Cabinet requesting that as of September 1, 2020, the occupant bears the cost of quarantine. The associated cost is still being discussed and will be communicated at a later date. From the Government Information Service, I am Janal Norville. During Tuesday night's update to the nation, Royal St. Lucia Police Forces Acting Commissioner of Police Milton Daisy reported on successes in the enforcement of the emergency powers order during the COVID-19 response period. Jesse Leos reports. Law enforcement continues to contend with illicit border entries. During Tuesday night's update to the nation, Acting Commissioner of Police Milton Daisy reported new arrests for this offense. Just last week, two persons were, were arrested for, for that. Um, they were taken in, um, into quarantine because um, they come in, we do not know, so we had to ensure that they go through the process and um, then we would do the, the charging. To date, the Southern Division of the Royal St. Lucia Police Force has responded to seven reports where four individuals were arrested for illegally gaining entry into St. Lucia. In the Northern Division, five individuals were dealt with at the Richfont Police Station and one was dealt with by the West Coast Police. 
Border security is crucial to the prevention of contagion during the COVID-19 pandemic. Daisy has assured that all resources at the disposal of the Royal St. Lucia Police Force have been deployed to intercept illegal crossings from neighboring islands. Police have also confirmed home quarantine revocations, becoming aware of breaches due to anonymous tip-offs from members of the general public. Last week, week before, we were able to bring in families yeah, returning nationals who came in, but they did not um, comply with the um, quarantine, the home quarantine protocols. They went out there and persons, we had the information, um, the police went in, got those persons and returned them, but cannot re ask them to stay home anymore. They had the opportunity to do that, but um, that they were returned to institutional quarantine. So. Uh, that I must say the public, um, I must thank them for the information that they are, they are given. According to the Police Public Relations, the Southern Division dealt with two families who violated home quarantine. Four individuals in the first family had their home quarantine revoked and were placed into a government quarantine facility. Similarly, two individuals from the second family were escorted from home to a quarantine facility for violating protocols. An update from the Northern Division regarding home quarantine violations remains pending. The number of persons arrested and charged for violating the curfew order stands at 56. Many more individuals were arrested, cautioned, and released. For the Government Information Service, I am Jesse Leons reporting. This is NTN Nightly. Please stay with us. In an effort to ensure patient and first responder safety, the St. Lucia Fire Service has reviewed its patient transfer procedures, especially for patients with respiratory distress. Face masks will be provided. At no time during transportation should the face mask be removed. Please be patient and cooperative during this time to ensure you receive the best possible care while keeping our first responders safe. Welcome back. Ensuring equitable access to vaccines, treatments and tests to all in the Caribbean and Latin America through international and regional collaboration is the only solution to ending the COVID-19 pandemic. So says UK and Mexico foreign secretaries who expressed this view during a joint virtual seminar under the theme Accelerating Access to COVID-19 Vaccines in Latin America and the Caribbean. They were joined by senior policymakers and scientists from across the region. The event was co-hosted by the UK and Mexico on the 5th of August and highlighted the importance of access to COVID-19 tools, ACT Accelerator, to ensure global access to vaccines, treatments and tests to face COVID-19. Caribbean and Latin American countries were represented by government officials, as well as representatives of development banks and health alliances, who highlighted the need for collaboration between governments, international institutions and businesses. UK Foreign Secretary Dominic Raab said that in order to end this terrible pandemic and kickstart global recovery, vaccines, treatments and tests must be accessible for all. British High Commissioner to Barbados and the Eastern Caribbean, Janet Douglas, indicated that the wide interest in the seminar at a senior level across the Eastern Caribbean is proof of the urgent need for all countries across the globe to have equitable access to vaccines. Finding a coronavirus vaccine and supporting equitable access to it for Latin America and the Caribbean countries is a priority for the UK government. The UK is collaborating with the international community to support the rapid development and manufacturing of safe, effective vaccines, as well as treatments and tests to ensure widespread global access. The UK has already committed some £313 million of UK aid to support research and development for vaccines, treatments and tests to ensure new tools are available to all, including the world's poorest countries. The UK also co-hosted June's Global Vaccine Summit, which mobilized US $8.8 billion to replenish Gavi, the Vaccine Alliance. A study has revealed the promising results of the Oxford University's Vaccine Phase 1 and Phase 2 trials, 
one of a number of projects supported by the UK government. St. Lucia continues to receive support from diplomatic allies in its fight against COVID-19. This time, aid is coming from the Republic of India, who made a donation to the government and, by extension, the people of St. Lucia. Anisia Antoine has the details. The government of the Republic of India is contributing to St. Lucia's fight against COVID-19 with a donation of medical supplies. Since the establishment of diplomatic relations in 1982, India has assisted with the development of St. Lucia through the implementation of programs aimed at developing its human resource, education, and strengthening the health sector. Representative of the Indian Cultural Foundation, Dr. Ram Thiapia, speaking on behalf of the High Commissioner of India to St. Lucia, stated that the donation of medicine to St. Lucia is a testimony of India's commitment to the advancement and development of St. Lucia, especially in the face of the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic. India is committed to supporting its friends and partners in the collective fight against the pandemic, including by providing essential medical supplies, global access to medicines, vaccines, and medical equipment to combat COVID-19. And it is vital for all countries and people. India believes that there should be free and open sharing of medical research. Uh, and drugs and vaccines. In tune with this spirit, India has responded positively uh, to the worldwide demand of essential medicines for almost 150 countries. Basically, it has become a pharmacy of the world as of today. Deputy Permanent Secretary in the Ministry of Health and Wellness, Jenny Daniel, expressed gratitude to the government of the Republic of India on behalf of the people of St. Lucia. The Ministry of Health and Wellness extends its thanks to the government of the Republic of India for its generosity displayed here today um, through the, the donation, kind donation of medicines as well as other PPEs. And we, w we wish to assure you that this donation of medica medication and PPEs will go a long way towards our, our response to the COVID-19 threat in St. Lucia. Um, we at the Ministry of Health cannot stress, cannot emphasize any further the importance of um, preventative measures as it pertains to COVID-19. However, we recognize that there must be, in preparation, a response to any outbreaks that we may experience now and in the future. Therefore, we are very much appreciative of any effort by any of our global partners to assist us in this fight and response. And we look forward towards our continued cooperation as we share experiences and we share guidance and obtain lessons learned with our global partners. The handing over ceremony for the donation of medical supplies took place on Wednesday, August 12, 2020 at the Ministry of External Affairs. From the Government Information Service, I am Anisia Antoine reporting. That brings us to the end of NTN Nightly. Join us next time at 7 p.m. with a repeat at 7 a.m. You can also catch up with us anytime on the St. Lucia Government Facebook page or YouTube channel. I am General Norville.